Hello, this is Against the Tide TV from Poland, Eunika Hojecka, and together with me are Tara and Marian Szczepańscy, host of the program Polish-American Brotherhood. It's great to have you in our TV. Hi, thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time in what you're doing for Poland and America. And um, Marian, you're a re refugee from Poland who got political asylum when he, you left uh, Poland in the 80s. And Tara is your daughter. And it's an amazing story. And I think we will talk about this in the second uh, uh, part of our talk. Uh, you, now you live in the States. And I want to talk firstly about the presidential election and campaign. You were and somehow take a part in this campaign. But uh, I want to ask you about uh, your uh, supporting uh, to President Trump because you turned from Trump haters to Trump supporters. Could you tell us more about this and how is it possible? Well, basically I'm a Democrat and I believe in Democrats. But when uh, Trump became a president, I believe in his way of doing things, that he promised and he delivered the promise. That's why I'm a supporter of his, what he's doing. Very much, Dad. Promises made are promises kept. As my dad mentioned that he was, um, prior to being a Trump supporter, he had voted for Hillary during the 2016 elections. And I'm a recent walk away also from the Democratic Party and had had my wakening up moment about three months ago. So I think that during this time period, over three years, I never even asked my father why he was a Trump supporter. And I was very dismissive of his views. And to me, that is also something that signals to be wrong, because you need to be able to talk to to important people such as your father, find out their views, your friends, your family, and understand what's going on in the world and why they have the views they have. So I recently walked away and am now went from a Trump hater to a Trump supporter. But why Donald Trump? Why do you support him uh, also in this campaign? Well, my wake up moment happened about I officially became a Trump supporter about three months ago when I raised up my flag on social media saying that I was a Trump supporter during the summer protests of BLM shortly after George Floyd's death. Uh, what the Kosciuszko statue, which is in front of the White House, was vandalized during the riots. And my father was very saddened by this action because, of course, we felt it to be an attack of our Polish heritage. And he said to me, nobody would stand up for Kosciuszko. And so I told him I would. And therefore, I just posted very simply on social media saying that, um, people do not do not know the history of this man, that he's a Polish-American revolutionary war hero. And that's how I knew that, that the BLM movement was a sham, because this is a man who fought for the freedoms of all Americans, and also upon his death, his entire state went to freeing slaves. So to vandalize a statue and a man that means this, you know this that the statement Black Lives Matter is not being true to, or the organization Black Lives Matter is not being true to the statement of Black Lives Matter. And in my defense, I called it as I saw it, as a domestic terrorist organization, because any organization that is terrorizing citizens and burning down our cities and rising and causing such damage both to the human body and to property, which is very anti-American, is going to be a sham of a movement. And so I received a lot of backlash from having this view and just simply posting it online. And so that's what launched me down my own independent research. And with my own independent research, that's when I realized that Trump is an amazing president that has done so much for America and for the world. And the news media doesn't cover it as it is. Marion, uh, could you tell us why President Trump is uh, so good for president for America, but also for Polish Americans and for Poland itself? Well, basically, President Duda and uh, President Trump, they're like two brothers, okay? And it's very important for Poland, okay, especially that uh, President Trump supporting uh, the uh, three seas, which is Między Morze, and for peace in Middle Europe is very important. 
We've been uh, commentated uh, this election uh, during our election night in, uh, against the Thai TV um, program. And uh, Trump, uh, uh, he was winning uh, in, the, in the night. But when we woke up in the morning, uh, we got to know that Biden is starting to win this uh, uh, election. How did you react uh, f for the so-called official results of the election that Joe Biden won? My, my reaction, I had a feeling that the, that the Democrats would be doing something to steal the vote. President Trump had been warning us of election fraud and the potentials of election fraud with the mail-in ballots. And even in the they, uh, the Democrats, uh, Nancy Pelosi in the House, had been holding up the stimulus package to be released to Americans, with also putting in provisions to support the uh, to support mail-in ballots. And with that, I had become suspicious of this. And so, with following the stories closely, uh, every time we went to sleep, there would be suddenly. Uh, a, a huge jump in votes. And so this launched me to be attending several rallies, the Stop the Steal rallies that have been going on. I was there in uh, November 14th, which was the Mega, Mega Million March in Washington, D.C. And I was recently also in the Stop the Steal March that occurred in Atlanta, Georgia last week. And with that, I've been in the front line discussing with people who have been witnesses within the, within the room. And so the news media has been reporting that Georgia, for instance, has had an audit. And that's not true. They had a recount. A recount is very different than an audit. An audit requires for signature val uh, verification for ensuring that the individual is alive. And those uh, basically reviewing, provi uh, providing an actual review of the ballot, as opposed to saying, oh, this ballot just has Joe Biden, let, let it go over here. So there's been many testimonies that have been coming out of of instances where the investigation has been hindered. And that's why Trump has been launching his uh, uh, launching his uh, legal investigations and requests to be going to the court. And so my reaction, I wasn't very surprised. I do have faith still in the American Democratic Republic. We are a, repu uh, a constitutional republic. And I have faith in our founding fathers and the systems that are in place that our founding fathers were brilliant when they developed our system of government. And so I believe that this is going to help pr prevent um, this uh, this steal that's occurring, and I have faith. So though I, I was surprised, I was not surprised, and I was prepared to stand up with my fellow Americans and fight against Stop the Steal. And how do you evaluate the chances for Joe Biden not to become a president? In evaluation whether or not Joe Biden is going, of course there is a chance that he will become the president, but um, and be inaugurated on January 20th. However, Trump has three pathways still to presidency. The media was immediately calling out that he is the pre uh, that Biden was the president elect, so, but they put in very small letters projected. And I believe this is to stir up the American public to think that Biden has been elected as president. Projection does not mean election. And so the three pathways that I was speaking of that the that President Trump has to becoming our our next president and continuing for another four more years, is first is going to be at the state level with the recounts and the audits, next is to the Supreme Court for the decision, and then lastly is through the, the, the vote per state. And so as uh, when you look at the map of the United States, there are, I believe, around 28 or 30 states that had gone red. That, so we have the majority of the states. Each state will account for one vote and if it goes to the third pathway for presidency, then Trump will also secure the uh, um, secure that day for January 20th to be inaugurated and continue his four more years. And uh, Tara, I want to ask you about uh, the, when you uh, were on this uh, on this protest, uh, you know, on the BLM protest. Uh, you are, of course, against this organization, but you know, you, you took part, take part as a journalist there. And when you've been to the March for Trump uh, in DC, uh, was any reaction from these uh, protesters from BLM and Tifa? They attacked you, or or, uh, or there there are uh, any other um, dangerous uh, situation? They are a dangerous or, um, organization. There are people here that claim that Antifa is just an ideology. 
But from my own eyes, I saw them organize. I talked to some members of Antifa before the violence had broken out in the evening because they always come out at night. Basically, that's when they start to throw fire fireworks where where civilians are dining. They start to attack women and um, elderly and families, basically those who are vulnerable and not able to fight. That's that's the people who they are terrorizing and attacking. So in my own experience, uh, actually on November 4th on Election Day, when I was passing by the Kashutsko statue, I felt inspired. I saw the signs for BLM that were blocking the White House at BLM Plaza, which is Freedom Plaza, uh, renamed to BLM Plaza. And this is in front of the White House, in front of the Kashutsko statue. And I felt inspired when I saw Kashutsko and remember that day that, that, that BLM had vandalized him and I started pulling down the signs and my own protest against BLM. And so it's, by my account, this isn't a, a stance of bravery, but others have told me that I am brave. And true bravery to me means, you know, running into running into a burning building, 9-11, the, the first responders that were there, the police officers, which I feel like as Americans, we have forgotten uh, that 9-11, it was the firefighters and first responders and police officers that were running into that. That's an account of true bravery. What I did was take a simple stand against BLM by pulling down their sign. And by doing that, I saw that there were more signs along the line and I continued going. And with that, a crowd had amassed around me. I interviewed with one individual. I, I knew that he was part of the BLM supporters when he interviewed me. But at the same time, I'm always willing to engage in honest discourse with individuals, even if they are on the opposite side. And so I answered my, I spoke my piece uh, that BLM is a domestic terrorist organization. I believe that all lives matter, that black lives do matter, but this organization is not true to that statement. It is a Marxist organization um, bent on creating chaos here in America. And it ha I've never, as a mixed race, Asian and Polish person, I have now witnessed more racism now in my life than I had growing up the entire time. And so with that, I encourage individuals to also rise up against BLM. I understand that there are risks that are involved because uh, Cancel culture is now a big part of uh, the mob's form of justice. You, you risk having your, your information put online, doxed is the term that they're using, um, to have your inf private information put online and to, for your job, your livelihood, then to be attacked. This in my, in, so when they say the First Amendment that you can't be arrested for your words, this still applies to the principles that, it, that exist because we are being silenced by by being put down with uh, the chance of losing our jobs for making a stand or for making any statement against BLM or Antifa because it goes against the mainstream media. So those of us who are brave, I will, I will take my stand and stand along with my fellow Americans to speak my piece and say that BLM is terrorizing our cities and we need to have justice. Is, is, there will be no, without justice, there won't be peace. Tara, thank you so much for uh, for what you're doing. It's very important and uh, it's very encouraging for us uh, too in Poland. And Marian, I, ha I have a question for you. Uh, what's your take on Biden's uh, statement that Poles are not very smart people in comparing Poland to mm, the dictatorial Belarus? Well, I have a little bit different opinion uh, about that, okay? Uh, we're calling the Joe Biden sleeping uh, Sleepy Joe. Yes. <laughs> well, but basically, uh, Poles are very brave, and uh, I want to be just like them. Uh, but basically, Belarus also is a brave people, just like in Polish, okay? And uh, I, I don't support Biden, that's why, because he's making a bad, uh, I would say. Bad statements. Bad, bad statements. Yeah, that's very true because um, President Trump has been accused of being racist, of being sexist, and all these horrible things. But that's an accusation that's made by the media, but taking sound bites and then uh, playing it out there without the actual context of the situations. And here you have uh, Biden, who is making outlandish statements that actually are indicative to his train of thought. He has said that you're, if you don't vote for him, you're not black. 
He is. He said that he doesn't want his children to grow up in a racial jungle. He has insulted Poles and also insulted um, uh, Belar uh, Belarusian citizens. So he's actually the one that is coming after all of our various ethnic groups. And that's an ind indication to his true state of mind and how he values people who are different than him. Your, your story is very beautiful. Mm, um, and... Uh, really what you're doing is beautiful because you start uh, this uh, channel, this uh, a Polish American Brotherhood program. And could you tell us uh, what is the idea behind this uh, program and what it's all about? Initially, my father had asked me to start this program with him to have the Polish American Brotherhood. We were focusing on the historic relationship between Poland and America, because they have been brothers since the inception of America. Poland is the first European constitution, uh, and similar to how, how America has started its constitution. So its spirit is very much the same between the Polish people and the American people. And that's why we have the camaraderie and, uh, and, uh, and livelihood and spirit amongst Polish people and Americans. And so, but with the way that history is taught here in America, as I said, people didn't really understand who Kosciuszko is. Though we have the Kosciuszko, we have Kosciuszko named after several statues and bridges, Pulaski also named. People don't know who these people, who these Polish people are. And so with that, we focused on the historical relationship between Poland and America uh, in simple in simple 10 facts about Poland, but uh, uh, reducing the content in size that is bite size for, for a simple information to Americans to understand that Polish people have been right there with America from the start. And so we were focusing on content that was historic. But of course, now with the elections and the current current state of America, uh, we pivoted to to covering history in the making because the spirit of of basically what basically what I've been doing with on um, frontline journalism, just as a citizen journalist being there witnessing it, it is in a sense I feel like I am reflecting the bravery of Polish people and uh, to rise rise against the tide of, of of the media, and so I've been reporting things that and and taking footage as I see it and to, con to contradict what the media narrative is. And um, basically that's, that's what I've been doing with the Polish American Brotherhood. So we uh, will go back to doing the historic relationship as uh, hopefully the current times can start to become more peaceful. I don't know when that will be exactly, but I am very passionate about traveling around to the various cities, covering as much um, of the events as they are unfolding and also vo voicing my voicing what I believe in my heart to be right. And I know that this has all been inspired by my father's story. And because his blood runs in me, we are the same person. Oh, it's very encouraging, uh, Tara. And I have a, a question to Marian. Uh, Tara is a Polish Filipino American. And how did you manage to uh, bring her up uh, as a, such a American and Polish patriot? Well, basically she got the same name what I do. <laughs> so she feels like uh, she is Polish and uh, my blood flows in her uh, blood also. Uh, but uh, the thing is what's happening in America now, uh, we both agree that it's not right. And we want to see America uh, lawful and uh, going the right way, and uh, I think America, since, since it's the strongest uh, country in the world, it can uh, direct itself to keep the peace in the whole world, and that's what we wanted. And in your opinion, how this uh, Polish-American relations uh, can be better? What can we do to make it better? Well, <laughs> basically it's the involvement uh, America in a, a, a continue to develop the uh, three seas, the Między Morze, and uh, keep the NATO in Poland. We, uh, what I heard that there is a lot of uh, NATO uh, Americans moving to Poland, and 
<laughs> I think that's the morality for the uh, middle Europe to uh, keep peace in a Central Europe. And I'm sure with that, there's going to be American investment in Poland. And Tara, the last question for you. Uh, I have, uh, uh, please uh, tell something to, to young Poles, uh, young Polish people, who are not patriot, who don't care about Poland, uh, uh, what can you, uh, can you say to such kind of Poles? I know that there are people who are apathetic, but everything that's going on, don't think it doesn't involve you, it doesn't impact you, because it does. These are your liberties, these are your rights that are under attack. And you may enjoy right now the freedom of freedom of speech and social media, but I can see freedom of speech being hindered upon within social media. And that's only where it starts. It's going to first start with, with anybody who is voicing a differing view for their content to be shut down, as I've been experiencing in my own realm of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram of being censored. That's where it starts. And then from there, it's going to go to a societal justice, that a societal mob justice, that if you say something uh, that people disagree with, whether, like how I did when I called BLM a domestic terrorist organization for vandalizing the Kosciuszko statue, um, I didn't even, in a sense, realize what I was doing, that it was going against the narrative. I just spoke my piece and what I knew to be right in my heart, and I faced the backlash of people. And so I wasn't very politically involved, though I had initially studied communication and politics in college, but I had geared away from that because politics is a very nasty world. It's, you have to have thick skin. And initially, I didn't think I had that kind of thick skin until now when everybody has been going against me. And with that, the more they tried to suppress my voice and tell me to shut up, the louder I became because those who were silent were reaching out to me and, and saying, thank you for speaking your voice because I'm not in a position that I can use mine. And so with, with that, I became, began speaking for those who are not able to speak. So the message I have for young Poles who, who are apathetic, this will impact you in your daily life. And we have liberties now that are under attack. And if we want to keep those, particularly freedom of speech, you, you need to use your voice rise up, and even if you're not in a position or, or to be rising up at protests or to be marching along, even simple conversations at the ground level that you will have with your peers and your friends, your family, those are things within your community that you can be doing that have an impact because true change is going to be occurring also at the ground level. It's in our thoughts and in our mind that everything will start. Thank you, Tara and Marian, for these powerful words. Uh, they are really important for us, uh, for the Poles, and uh, we will be praying for you, for your program, and for the states and Americans, and of course, for President Donald Trump. Um, Tara and Marian Szczepańscy were my guests, host of the program Polish American Brotherhood. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. It was a privilege and I want to thank also for organizing this interview our Israeli correspondent Ivan Belostenko and our Taiwanese correspondent Hannah Shen. And I think we can present now uh, our um, animation Polish American Brothers in Arms in 1920 in the Battle of Warsaw by my father, Pastor Paweł Chojecki and Szymon Żuk. Thank you so much, Tara and Marian. It was against the Tide TV, Unika Chojecka. See you soon. On the 15th of August, we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Warsaw, in which the Polish army defeated the Bolsheviks near Warsaw. This battle has a little known but amazing story, which also had an impact on the whole war. To tell it, we have to go back 150 years and move to America to the time of the American Revolutionary War. In the late 18th century, when Poland, as a result of the partitions, began disappearing from the map of the world, great Poles went overseas. Those for whom there was no place in the collapsing Poland 
which was bowing to the Tsars of Russia, Prussia and Austria, were received by America. The most famous of them was Tadeusz Kościuszko. It was he who gave engineering troops and the best fortifications, including West Point, to the American settlers who rose against the oppression of their English king. It was Kościuszko who modernized the American army. The Americans had infantry, but the Poles always had the best cavalry. It was Kazimir Pułaski who built the American cavalry. He gave Husser wings to the Americans, so to speak. Also, Pułaski saved the life of the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army, George Washington. What's even more interesting, the money that the Americans got for the Revolutionary War came from a Polish Jew from Leszno, Chaim Solomon, a subject of the last Polish king. Polish people helped Americans fight for their independence, and together they succeeded. The United States of America was founded. But what does it have to do with the Battle of Warsaw in 1920? Although it is said that politics are dirty and not guided by sentiments, this isn't entirely true. In 1920, we won the battle against the Bolsheviks, thanks to God, of course, but also thanks to the help of Americans. American pilots remembered Kościuszko and Pułaski. They said that our ancestors had given their lives for America. That is why they, American pilots, as they said, were now sailing overseas to give their lives for Poland. The Americans assisted one of the most modern units in the Eastern theater of warfare against the Bolsheviks the Kościuszko Squadron, Polish 7th Air Escadrille. 21 Americans served alongside Poles. American pilot Marion C. Cooper, who initiated this aid, referred to Kościuszko and Pułaski's sacrifice. We are now going to pay off the debt. His ancestor fought in the Battle of Savona alongside his friend Kazimir Pułaski in the American Revolutionary War. He also thought under the command of General Kościuszko. This memory was passed on in the Cooper family from generation to generation. He wrote that paying off the debt owed to Poland was like a comment to them. The commander of the squadron, Cedric Fontelroy, was an experienced American airman. The Americans helped Poles defend the Polish sky from the aggression of the Asian barbarians from the east as the Polish newspapers called the Bolsheviks in 1920. One of the Polish infantry commanders reported in 1920, American pilots, despite their exhaustion, are fighting like madmen. Without their help, they would have taken us to hell long ago. The Kościuszko squadron played an important role in stopping the offensive of Russia's first cavalry army, commanded by Siemian Budionny. If two Russian armies, Budionny's army from the south and Mikhail Tuhachevsky's army from the north and the east, had met near Warsaw in 1920, Poles would not have stood a chance. But God used the Americans to help us stop Budionny's army near Lviv. Only Tuhachevsky's army made it to Warsaw, but they ran away like bats out of hell. The head of state, Marshal Józef Piłsudski, awarded nine American airmen with the Silver Cross of the Virtuti Militari and four with the Cross of Valor. Initially, Piłsudski was skeptical about accepting American help, but once he saw their courage and dedication to Poland, he said, Glory to you, American airmen. This story shows that there is something beautiful about politics. There is gratitude. 
there are values in politics. It's worth asking, where do those values come from? From where do we get the love for good, justice and law? After Poland won the war against the Bolsheviks in 1930, a big-budget Polish battle film, Starry Squadron, about the heroic airmen from the Kościuszko unit was made. It showed how dangerous the memory of the Polish-American Brotherhood of Arms is for Russia. Needless to say, the Soviets who attacked Poland with Hitler in 1939 either destroyed or took away probably all copies of this film. Do not let this story be forgotten again. <laughs>